Game of Thrones is often derided for changing things from the book, and very much for good reason. In the later seasons, many things were changed for seemingly no reason, plots were cut, and things were just made more convenient for the sake of getting the writers home on time. However, if you look at the early seasons of the show, there are a number of excellent changes there that really improve the story as a whole. Things that just aren't possible in the books, like the conversation between Cersei and Robert, and the numerous conversations between Varys and Littlefinger. None of these characters are point-of-view characters at the time of these scenes, and because of that, they cannot happen in the books. It very much improves the source material and makes for a more cohesive and in-depth story. These changes that are good from the books get fewer and farther between as the series goes on, but there is one in the fifth season that I quite enjoy. Hard Home is a pretty undisputedly great episode in the series, at least in terms of the final battle. It's one of the last moments of true spectacle in the show that really lives up to any storytelling hype that could be around it, and today I'm going to examine how that event differs from what we have in the books, as well as theorize as to what the events in the book are going to have to do with the future in the winds of winter. Specifically, in the books, the events of the battle at Hardhome are not on page at all. No point of view character is present for what's going down there. It's just this kind of ominous event that seems to be lurking in the background for the last several chapters of the most recent book. And today, I'm going to take a look at those chapters and analyze what this event could have to do with the future of the story, as well as what Hardhome's history could tell us about the future of A Song of Ice and Fire as a whole. I'm Quinn the GM, I hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Without further ado, let's dive into the history of Hardhome. Hardhome was originally intended to be the only town north of the Wall. This area is primarily populated by nomadic groups of wildlings who we get familiar with through John's perspective in A Clash of Kings and A Storm of Swords. It was built up over decades, and at a point, even a maester comes to go and help the town build and serve as an advisor. This maester, known as Willis, journeyed to Hardhome aboard a Pentoshi trader and established himself as a healer and a counselor under the protection of one of the four chieftains that controlled this new settlement. However, this chieftain was eventually murdered by one of his constituents, and Willis, the maester, fled back to Old Town and soon wrote a book that has become famous and is pretty much the only thing that people know about Hardhome these days, other than the information we'll get into in a second. That book is known as Hardhome, an account of three years spent beyond the wall among savages, raiders, and woods witches. While this settlement did initially show a lot of promise, it was abruptly destroyed six centuries prior to the main series of A Song of Ice and Fire, so 300 years prior to Aegon's conquest. Something terrible seems to have happened in a single night, though the details are uncertain. It does seem to echo the doom of Valyria in certain ways, in that it's a single devastating event that seemingly in a single day wiped out a civil civilization, but this does seem to be far smaller than the doom of Valyria. Specifically, some details are known of this event. The homes of the inhabitants burned, all of them, and they were so hot and so bright that the Night's Watch seemed to think that the sun was rising from the north that morning. Additionally, after these events, ashes rained down on the haunted forest and the Shivering Sea for over half a year. Hardhome's people are said to have been carried off into slavery or slaughtered for meat by cannibals, but overall it's really unknown as to what happened to them. There is one final hint regarding the fate of Hardhome's inhabitants. Traders and Night's Watchmen alike investigated this ruin in the years following its collapse, finding only charred trees, burnt bones, and rivers clogged with corpses. There is one significant hint of life remaining in the area, however. The Night's Watch ship specifically reported screams echoing from caves nearby the town. Now we should take a look at what exactly might have happened at Hardhome, and I do have a theory that I really haven't seen other people mention. The clear indication here is that, oh, it was probably the others. The White Walkers did something, and it caused all of the people in the town to die. That's why they burned their homes. However, this is 600 years prior to the main series. It makes you wonder that if there was this massive White Walker attack 600 years ago, why did it stop here 600 years ago? Why didn't they march further on the Wall or on the entirety of Westeros, given that it was at that time, not united in a number of warring kingdoms rather than one united realm, similarly to how the realm is currently divided under Tommen. I think that it wasn't the White Walkers that ended up destroying Hardhome initially. I think it will be this time, but I think initially it was probably Grayscale that destroyed this settlement. 
Grayscale might seem a bit out there, but stick with me for a second. We know that the Wildlings have knowledge of this disease via Val's perspective in A Dance with Dragons. She meets with Shireen Baratheon and is very scared and tells Jon that this child is unclean. She is still sick and can still reinfect people at the Wall and beyond it. We know that the Wildlings somehow know about this, but we don't know of any specific instances where Wildlings would have this disease. Additionally, Val specifically mentions Woods Witches, which is not something very frequently mentioned north of the Wall, but it is mentioned in relation to Hardhome in that initial description in the world of Ice and Fire. To me, the burning of all of these houses very much sounds like a medieval method to contain disease. If the Black Plague came to a town, perhaps they'd burn down the infected's house. Perhaps this was something similar that happened at Hardhome. A house was burned down, or several houses, and perhaps either the blaze was spread out of control, or it was viewed to be a lost cause, and that burning the entire town would be a mercy. Specifically, the detail that seals this theory for me is the screams in the caves after the fact. We know the others and the White Walkers do not scream whatsoever, but gray men, stone men, are known to lose their wits. They're known to go mad with this disease. And the thought of these caves running rampant with men infected with grayscale does leave a bit of a haunting image that I think might be what Gurm is trying to go for. Enough about history. What happens at Hardhome in the main story? Well, after Mance Raiders attack on the wall, similarly to the show, a number of wildlings disperse, and under the leadership of a woman named Mother Mole, they all reconvene at Hardhome in order to hopefully find a way south. Uh, John sees to it that they will hopefully have a way south via borrowing Stannis' ships and sending Cotter Pike, another member of the Night's Watch, with 11 ships north of the Wall to Hardhome in order to rescue these wildlings and ensure they do not join the forces of the Army of the Dead. We get a status update on this mission during Jon's second-to-last chapter in A Dance with Dragons. Jon is not there himself. He's busy dealing with a million problems at the Wall, but instead he sends his vassal to go do this for him. To quote from A Dance with Dragons, Jon 12, At Hardhome, with six ships, wild seas, Blackbird, which is one of the ships, lost with all hands. Two Lysini ships, driven aground on Skane. Talon taking water. Very bad here. Wildlings eating their own dead. Dead things in the woods. Bravosi captains will only take women children on their ships. Witch women call us slavers. Attempt to take Stormcrow defeated. Six crew dead, many wildlings. Eight ravens left. Dead things in the water. Send help by land. Seas racked by storms. From Talon, by hand of Master Harmoon, Cotter Pike had made his angry mark below. This letter is often overshadowed by the pink letter, which is kind of its younger brother that comes in the next chapter, but it is just such a haunting image of these things continually going wrong as they're running out of ravens, running out of ways to communicate with the outside world as this army of the dead, dead things in the woods and in the water, close in. Unfortunately, it seems quite unlikely that we'll see Hardhome in the Game of Thrones books. Jon Snow was killed only a chapter after this, and even before his death, he announced his intention to, rather than ride to Hardhome and help the Wildlings, ride south and help Stannis Baratheon reclaim Winterfell. Because of Jon's death and the chaos at the Wall that would cause, I doubt that we're going to hear about Hardhome until at least a quarter or halfway through the Winds of Winter. That event is going to likely take place very similarly to the show. I imagine the dead will attack and gain massive ground for their army via killing all of these wildlings and maybe even getting these ships from the Night's Watchmen. I would expect at least one ship of the Night's Watch to escape and likely bring the news back to East Watch at some point, but it's unclear exactly who might be on that ship. Carter Pike is a fairly interesting character, but it's unclear if he'll make it out of this mess alive. This is seemingly confirmed in Melisandre's point of view chapter, where she receives a prophecy that directly mirrors the events that we anticipate will occur at Hardhome. Quote, Snowflakes swirled from a dark sky and ashes rose to meet them. The gray and the white whirling around each other as flaming arrows arced above a wooden wall, and dead things shambled silent through the cold, beneath a great gray cliff where fires burned inside a hundred caves. Then the wind rose, and the white mist came sweeping in, impossibly cold, and one by one the fires went out. Afterwards, only the skulls remained. This directly mirrors the events we see in the television show, and if I had to guess, this is the main inspiration that Dan and Dave took in creating that excellent battle sequence in Season 5. 
Overall, what do you think will happen at Heart Home? I'd love to get your thoughts and see if I missed anything. This was a very kind of uh, Halloween type video I felt like doing as I hadn't covered Heart Home and had thought to for a few months now. It's an interesting topic that I hope will get sufficient coverage in the winds of winter should it ever be released. I hope you all have a great and safe Halloween. I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of your day. If you uh, enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. As I said at the top, it really helps me grow the channel. Really appreciate any help uh, for anything, really. Uh, and uh, comments are also appreciated. Love to hear your thoughts. I will have more videos upcoming in the very near future, and I look forward to hopefully seeing you all there. Goodbye.